little bit about the guest tonight. She is evangelist Olivia K. Howard Harris. She's a graduate of Kansas State University with a bachelor's of science degree. She has worked in the public sector in the area of human services in various capacities. She has specialized training for work with children, with, excuse me, with child victims of sexual abuse and teen parents. From January 1995 until retirement in July 2021, she was employed at the Shawnee County Court Services Community Service Work Coordinator and Juvenile Probation Officer. From, 20, from 2001 to 2013, she was employed as a Kansas, service, Kansas Children's Service League Juvenile Intake Counselor, where she was given an award for Champion of Children. Liv is a member of River of Life Family Worship Center, Church of God in Christ, under the leadership of Pastor Sam M. Frazier and missionary Diane Frazier, saved at 11 years old and filled with the Holy Ghost at the age of 13. Missionary Harris has given her life to the service of the Lord. She was born and raised in Wichita, Kansas, Kansas, under the pastorate of her grandfather, the late superintendent Robert Calhoun, and grandmother, the late district missionary Idella Calhoun. Her parents are Pastor John W. Howard Sr. of Galilee Kojic and the late missionary Adela Howard. Liv is an evangelist missionary in the Church of God in Christ. She teaches the Kojic Doctrine class and various training classes for aspiring missionaries. She is the president of the Young Women's Christian Ministry, excuse me, Young Women's Ministries at her local church and has a strong ministry for single women. She has a nursing home ministry and is the assistant C.H. Mason District Missionary, serving closely with State Supervisor Mother Novella Singleton and Superintendent W.O. Sherrod. Her bishop is the Honorable Prelate Bishop L.F. Thuston. Liv served in the Kansas East Jurisdiction Finance Office from 2005 to 2013 before transferring to the Kansas East Women's Department Executive Committee as the Financial Recording Secretary until 2018. She served 15 years as Bishop's Winter Leadership Conference Registration Coordinator. Liv has volunteered with Kansas Special Olympics and Keep America Beautiful. She co-facilitated positive action classes with PARS and volunteered with Junior Achievement. In 2016, she became certified to teach the thinking for a change program. She is currently pursuing certification as a certified parent coach. And in December 2011, Liv published a novel of historical Christian fiction entitled Moon Song. She is contributing, she is a contributing author of the fiction novel Superimposed, released in 2014. In May 2022, she released her first nonfiction book, Single, Saved, and Satisfied. And that's what we're going to talk about tonight. Liv is the mother of three amazing daughters, one son, three grandchildren, and several foster children and one grand puppy. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce to you the evangelist, Liv Howard. Let's give her a hand. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Welcome. We're so glad to Good have you evening. on this <laughs> It's like what the devil meant for bad. God meant it for good. We had a little technical difficulties, but that doesn't stop nothing here. That's right. So we won't promote it tonight. I'll let you open us up in prayer. Just a little brief prayer. Thank you. Father, I thank you because you are our God. You are our Savior and you are our King. I thank you for your Holy Spirit that comforts us, who guides us and teaches us. We thank you for your presence, even in our lives and even in this room tonight. We thank you for every opportunity that we have, God, to draw closer to you, to share your word with somebody, to speak a word of encouragement, to speak a word that might lift and strengthen somebody in their walk and draw them closer to you. We thank you, Lord, for, for Dr. Gina tonight, God. Thank you for the spirit that you have on her life and the anointing that you have on her and this opportunity, God, to reach out and to just to share your love and to share some joy and some laughs and some conversation about how good you are. We bless you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So again, if you're just joining in, we have evangelist Liv Howard. She's the author of the book, Single, Saved, and Satisfied. Can you tell me what prompted you to write this book and, and the title, the name of it? Oh, absolutely. Um, I, I like this title because it speaks to um, three different things. It speaks to who you are as a single person. 
it speaks to who you are as a spiritual person. And it speaks to the joy that you can find in living this life for God, regardless of your circumstances, but especially as a single person, because people don't address our single issues very much within the context of the church. So um, that's kind of where the title came from, single as I am, saved as I will um, continue to be and as God has kept me and satisfied because I don't have to worry that God is in control. <laughs> Amen. All of that. Amen. Amen. I've got a little bit of a delay, a, a breakup. So you'll see me kind of listening to hear what you're That's saying. Okay. That's okay. That is all right. No, thank you for that answer. And, you know, uh, a few guys gave me some questions to ask. And one of the first uh, questions that someone asked me is, do you think people are fooling themselves when they say I'm single, saved and satisfied? Well, that's an interesting question because it can be taken more than one way. Um, if you're saying fooling themselves is because they're saying something that they know is not true, I think that's <laughs> how you deceive yourself. Um, then I can't, I'd have to speak in generalizations, but there are some people who are fooling themselves. They're just saying that they're saved and satisfied because of the fear that goes with saying that they want something more. And some people have gotten to the point where they're almost afraid to want more or almost afraid to verbalize that I'm unhappy or that I'm lonely or that I've been asking God for something for a long time that I haven't gotten. Sometimes they become afraid to want. So they'll just say, oh, I'm satisfied. And for one thing, that wards off more questions. Um, that slows the conversation of the people that are telling you, you know, or asking you, you know, what's next or why not? So there's a lot right. of reasons that people would say that. But some people are fooling themselves or attempting to fool themselves into believing that they're satisfied when they're not. Some people are saying it because they're trying to speak it into existence. They may not be completely satisfied yet, but they want to be. So they're right. saying it and trying to bring about that state of mind. And then there's some people who are single, saved, and satisfied. <laughs> right, right. You have all of that out there. No, and it, with Valentine's Day coming up, I thought this would be a, a good topic because some people may get the blues, you know, may get discouraged. Oh, I'm alone again. You know, not just Valentine's Day, but every holiday, you know, some people might just go through withdrawals mm -hmm. or some little depression or anxiety because they're alone. How would you encourage someone that is right. going through right. times like that? So I figure that this might be a good conversation to help someone. Um, there was a question that I was asked to ask. Um, do you think that some that are single, save and set aside because of discontent with the previous person they may have been with, like the ex-husband or the ex-wife or someone that they were dating and found out that they weren't any good? Do you think that that may be... Um, some of the discontent of being single and saying that that's why they want to be single and satisfied because yes. of past hurts and traumas and things like that. Mm -hmm. That's one of the things that I do address in the book. And that is talking about um, being real with yourself about why you're single. And there are any number of reasons that we're single. Um, there are those that have come out of dysfunctional uh, relationships that have damaged them in any number of ways. Some people that is an emotional or psychological damage. Um, for some people, um, that might be an abusive situation. For some people, it might be one of those relationships that started out real good and we thought this was thing was going to last. And then down the road, you found out that you were incompatible or down the road, you grew apart or whatever the case may be. There, there are a lot of reasons that people are are were previously um, in a relationship in a marriage and and they no longer are in it some of those people are, are widows or widowers not every widow was in a good marriage right. not every man that's a widower was in a good marriage right. so sometimes there there's a lot of things that you come out of that relationship with 
that can um, become barriers for you in any number of ways. So for a lot of us, we have to be willing to take a realistic look at ourselves and see, am I single because I'm not willing to risk myself again? Some people right. just are not willing to risk their heart again. It literally was broken and I don't right. want it broken again. And right. so they're, they are either sometimes consciously, sometimes subconsciously creating environments where they cannot build a relationship. They cannot build intimacy, emotional intimacy with another person because of the past hurts that they've gone through. And, and it can also be not just the hurts, but sometimes it was just not a positive experience. You were right. married to someone and it wasn't a good marriage and you weren't right. fulfilled in that marriage. And you just wanted out of that marriage. And now that you are free, the idea of binding yourself again, and it's and it feels like being bound again mm -hmm. to another person is not mm -hmm. something that you want. Amen. Sometimes people don't want to enter back into a relationship or into an or even enter into another relationship because. Um, being out of this bad relationship, I now have another, a whole new level of freedom and another level of independence. And I'm building my own self-esteem and I'm becoming confident in who I am. And yeah. I'm finding my strengths and I'm finding my ministry and I'm speaking my witness. And I feel better about who I am, where I am right now. And I don't want to change that. You talk that can good. happen sometimes. And it's not wrong. That's <laughs> that's why we talk about, that's what I'm talking about, being satisfied. So mm -hmm. that means that there, you mentioned that coming up to Valentine's Day and, and even coming into any of the holidays, there can be a sense of loneliness and a sense of aloneness. And for each individual, I think you have to identify that. What am I dealing right now? Am I just, am I really lonely Am I just struggling with being being by myself? Am I? Is it the need for a companion? Is it a need to be able to have a conversation with somebody that's going to laugh about what I laugh about? Is it a need to, to have somebody that looks at me like I'm somebody special who co is concerned about what I feel, who laughs yeah. when I say something stupid? Is it is it that? Am I lonely, or am I dealing with aloneness? I'm solitary. Mm -hmm. I'm by myself myself. I'm occupying myself. I'm occupying my time. My mind is stimulated by my the things that I read and the intelligent conversations that I have with peers. And I'm just alone. And right. so we have to decide whether or not we are alone or we're dealing with loneliness. And we will deal with both of them. Even people right. that are saved and satisfied, you will deal with both of them. So you have to recognize right. which, which one you're in. Am I period of aloneness or am I just dealing with loneliness because then you have to decide how to handle that what you want to do about it and how you want to go about it but being saved and satisfied single saved and satisfied that satisfied is the part where you're not I'm I'm just I'm so alone and I'm unhappy I'm alone in my aloneness my loneliness is what I feel that's the paramount at the end of the day when I lay, when I get through brushing my teeth and taking my shower and putting on my garments and crawling into my crisp warm sheets and, and getting settled down, do I now think, it, are my thoughts, boy, I, I wish I had somebody else's shoulder to lay my head on. I wish I had somebody else that I could tell them how my day was. I wish I could tell somebody else I'm tired of having to put the air in my tires and change my light bulbs and clean the trash cans <laughs> on the weekend. Is that your focus? <laughs> I'm just saying is that where you know, is, is. Your focus is what you don't have then you're fo then you're more likely to be lonely but if your focus is on what you're grateful for on what you have on where god has brought you on how he keeps you on how god covers you how you can lay your head on that exact same pillow and the presence and the power of god will lay right there with you and you mm -hmm. can be filled with joy and you can be filled with comfort and you can know that I, you know what? Today was rough. I had to deal with some things today. I had to go through some things today. I had to say some things today. I had to bite my tongue on a few things today, but God, I give mm -hmm. you the glory. I got through today and you will strengthen me for tomorrow. I'm satisfied. Thank you, God, for what you did. Thank you, God, for what you're doing. It's me and Jesus. Roll over, wrap yourself up in that, <laughs> in that place. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a heart of thanks and gratitude. 
<laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. That, and the, that. the thing is, um, what I said before, it really, the focus really is on what you have and not what you don't have. Yeah. That was a long answer to that question. <laughs> no, that, that was good. Someone needed to hear that. Someone really needed to hear that. And I was laughing at some of the things you were saying, because like, I don't mind going out to eat by myself. I go to the movies by myself, wherever I want to go. I just do it. I don't care. The only time sometimes I wish I had a husband was on mm -hmm. Thursday to take the trash out. <laughs> and then I know it doesn't sound polite, but. <laughs> right. <laughs> and that's one of the things I said to someone else's weekend. One of my comments is sometimes I wish I had a weekend husband just for the exactly. weekend because I got some honey dudes. I want somebody else to do that. I don't want to have to do all myself. <laughs> Sometimes I just want a, or, uh, a weekend husband. <laughs> all right. Like and that's not, not there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with feeling that and acknowledging that. You know, those those are the things that that's what I'm saying. Being real with yourself is acknowledging yeah. that sometimes, you know, we, we yeah. all need a little help and we need some companionship. And there are times right. when, you know, we want somebody else to split them bills down the middle and let somebody else worry about when they come and do this month. I know that's right. <laughs> And, and make my unusual. tires shine because no matter how many times I buy that tire shine and try to clean my tires, they don't look right. <laughs> you know, after you get the car washed, and it's like do it. real good. I, I try, but that part, I, I just, I, <laughs> I just wasn't gifted there. And it's a blessing for some people. Some people have that person or those persons, those uncles or those brothers or those brothers in the church or, you know, that that father figure or that father or that grandpa. Some people have that person that they can call on that can come and they can kind of ease the burden of doing some of that. Some brothers wish that he didn't have to come home and cook dinner at night, that he has somebody that would have that. Shoot, I wish that. That I, you know, I told my daughter, if I ever get rich, first thing I'm hiring is a cook. So I have to figure out these meals every day. So, I'm just saying, these are, these are things everybody deals with, you know. And some people want someone to take care of. There, you know, there are some men, both men and women, who would like to have somebody that needs them. Who would like right. to have someone that, you know, when they walk in, you, you know, that person's eyes are going to light up because it's you. Right. Because it's you. So people deal with those various forms of aloneness in their singlehood. And that's why it's important that your relationship with God remains forefront, because as long as your focus is on those things that you want, that why, God, why haven't you given it to me yet? Why, God, I've been praying all these years and I'm still people still saying, girl, you're next. You know, they do that all the time. Uh, people, right. I've had people like, tell me, girl, you bet go, go buy you. A wedding dress and put it in your closet because God's go. You do it by faith. Cause I ain't buying no dress. Uh, 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 okay, mm -hmm. I'm not doing it. No, <laughs> like no, thank you. Right? No, no absolutely you. not. <laughs> that's why your focus has to be on the one that provides for you and His goodness and how He strengthens you and and getting to the point where you recognize that God has you right where you need to be, right mm -hmm. where you are right now. This is where you need to be. This season that you're in, whether you're in a season of singleness for a short period of time and you will marry, or whether you are in a single, whether you're singleness for a lifetime, but whatever it is, you have to be willing to accept the will of God in that. And I have to admit for many years following my divorce, I think I, I walked in obedience. I walked in disobedience because I was not willing to entertain it. Wasn't willing to entertain the, even the possibility. And it was actually, I stayed supervisor, Mother Singleton. I was at her house and we were talking and she said, come here, Olivia. <laughs> sit down right here. And I had to sit <laughs> down on the floor by her knee. And she said, what if the Lord wants to give you a husband? You going to keep telling him no? I said, I'm going to run. <laughs> she didn't like that answer. Mm -hmm. She didn't like that either. But she kept, <laughs> kept me on my knees on the floor until I repented. <laughs> and until I was, and, and I really thought about it. Because here I am walking in ministry. 
here I am walking in a path where I'm teaching others, where I'm being an influence over other young women, especially over their lives. I'm raising daughters. And here I am doing all of that, yet I have this kernel of disobedience, unwilling to hear what God would say on that subject. You can't walk Sister in disobedience Laverne. and be satisfied. Right. Sister Laverne said, yes. Go ahead. She said, yes, they've been telling me that for years that she's next. Well, you never know, sis. <laughs> <laughs> and you, you might be know. next, but you might not be. You have to know what season God has you in and live joyfully in this season. You know, find ways. And I agree with you, uh, Dr. Ross. I go out, I take myself out to eat. Sometimes I dress my whole self up and look good and take myself out to eat. I take myself to the movies. I take myself to shows and concerts. Anywhere I want. I I will travel by myself. Take myself on vacation. I do that. Because I'm not going to miss those things, hoping that someone will show up to take me. Mm -mm. Hoping that Mm -hmm. someone will show up to, to provide you might be waiting forever for me. <laughs> Sister I Bonnie joyfully Parker go. Said, I do a lot of things. I still have. I, I have. I didn't hear you. She said I couldn't hear it. No, I was reading Sister Bonnie Walker's comment because I say? thought you were talking about. She said she's waiting on God. She's waiting on God, and we got that delay going mm-hmm. on. Absolutely, Amen, Sister. So what would you we say? Do, and I can't see the comments. Oh, you can't see them? Okay. Well, what would you say to someone that, uh, a sister that will say she's been hiding forever and she hasn't been found by her Boaz? How long do you think she should hide? Keep hiding or come out the corner a little bit? What do you suggest? If she is single and she's ready to mingle. <laughs> come on, come on. <laughs> Come out the corner, you can't hide. I wrote something in here. Um, I wrote, a single woman may feel that she is in a holding pattern, but that does not mean that she is to remain idle, waiting for her real life and her real happiness to begin once she's married. It can be a time of active waiting. It can be time to be molded and shaped in who God wants you to be. And that may a, B, a single woman, or that might be a married woman, but you are not narrowly defined by your role as someone's wife. You are anointed in your own right. You are free to follow a path that God has you on. You are free to follow your dreams. And that's that's what I say to people who are hiding. One thing, the scripture wants us to hide ourselves in the Lord, okay? Not hide from people, not hide from each other. Make yourself available. <laughs> you know, go, go where you can be found. Um, a lot of times, the, thing, the main thing that you find that you enjoy is something that you it's been right there all the time, and you you find a trip over it. And hey, there it is. <laughs> but I would say that a lot of times, if when we're hiding, if you consider what that means, I've got myself undercover, and I've got myself. Um, I think about how, how as a little child I had nightmares. And so when I pulled the cover over my head, I felt like the monsters couldn't see me and I was safe and I was protected under that cover. Now we are safe and we are protected under the covering of of Christ, under the power of his spirit and by the Holy Ghost. That's where we are hidden in Christ and we are safe and we are protected. But he will allow someone to find you if that is his will for you, if that is his plan for you. He, that person will find you. So just be hidden in Christ. Don't be. You're freezing up. You're frozen. Are you able to hear me? Well, my whole screen disappeared. There. I see you, but you're frozen. Yes, I hear you. Can you hear me? Okay, now I can. I see Sister Laverne. Okay, my whole screen is for for a moment. Okay, she said, I enjoy my single life, but I do desire to get married. 
That's Laverne Forever Grateful Carter from St. Mm -hmm. Louis. Was Missouri in the house? And Sister Bonnie okay. Walker said, I desire to be married, never been married, but she's not hiding. Yes. And I think there's there's everything right about desiring to be married. There's nothing wrong with that. I believe being married is a great life. Um, I, I know um, a few couples who um, are friends and who are married and have great, great marriages. There's nothing wrong with that. And that's something that you keep putting before the Lord. While you're remaining steadfast for him, it steadfast in him, you go ahead and you put that before the Lord and you let him know that's the desire of your heart. And he will continue to work those desires. He will continue to work that heart so that it's rooted and it is grounded in him, so that it is full of him. One of the things that I do tell things that I do tell my single women, especially, is that we are created by God to love and desire and to be his. And anything that we're looking to be fulfilled by besides him distracts us from him. So wanting to be married is good, um, but that can't be your whole focus. That can't be what the only thing that you're after. And I, I wrote something. I want to see if I can find it right quick in the book. Um, I don't know where it is right off, right off hand, but one of the things that it talks about is our desire to be filled with the Lord and how if we put anything else in that place that God wants, then we still remain unfulfilled. We will be forever wanting more. We will, we will always be thirsty. We will always be hungry. We will always have that empty spot in our heart when we're looking for anything more than Christ. I have Christ. He lives in my heart. He saved me. He delivered me. But Kurt, I also want anything more than him will leave us continually wanting. Mm -hmm. Anything more than him will leave us continuously seeking. So we be filled with him. And then we wait expectantly. We wait joyfully. And we wait until he gives us an answer. And sometimes that answer is, yes, you will marry. I have someone for you. Sometimes that answer is no, you will not marry. You will be single. Will I be enough for you? I mean, he, Christ will ask that question. Will I be enough for you? Or what else do you need? Because I'm not enough. You want somebody else. You want more. So then but how we do can you be filled with his word and filled with Oh, go ahead. Go, you, you can finish. The delay is throwing me off. <laughs> I had a question for right. you, but you finished saying what you were saying. I, I That was okay. I was kind of coming to an end of that. Okay. The question is, how do you know to define your purpose in ministry and life being single? I mean, like when you're single, are you doing more for the Lord or, or less for the Lord? Or how do you think single people balance that? It's, it is a balancing act. Um, because many of us are, there's a, there's a video that I want to share when I have time to be able to do this presentation again, um, where there's a man on there that's talking about how um, the pastor is the de facto pa uh, husband to all the single women in the church. And um, you feel that you owe him something. Um, but, but one of the things that I very much encourage is knowing who you are and what you are. And that is in any area of ministry, staying before God until you hear from him with the assurance of the path that you should walk. Mm -hmm. So when you hear from him of the assurance of the gift that he has put in you and working to fulfill that gift. So and that doesn't have to be the same all the time. I believe that I, I wish that every church office had term limits every one of them. So. Yeah. Um, you the you the usher president, good. You got two good years. Usher all you can. At the end of the two years, you move on and 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 get in the hospital. 
do that for two good years and then move on. But my, my point about that is don't, well, you don't have to feel like you're static. So the area that you've been working in, I taught Sunday school from the age of 13 to the age of 50. When I tried to back off teaching Sunday school, I caught so much flack. But if you if you know your Bible, then if you don't know your Bible, you need Sunday school. If you do know your Bible, the Sunday school needs you. We need teachers. We need people. If you go walk right, I've been teaching since I was 13 and I'm 50. I'm tired. <laughs> I want to do something else. Mm -hmm. Okay. So don't feel like, and it's hard in this church world to say no. It's hard to resign from anything, especially I'm getting better, better as a single woman because they expect you to have the availability. No. Right. Like, like you don't have anything else to do because you are <laughs> yes. single. Um, yes. But don't feel like you have to, that you're static, that the thing that you're doing is a thing that you have to do. Right. Lord help me. Uh, but don't be afraid to pursue your dreams. Don't, don't be afraid to dream another dream. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't hear you. Say again. I, I was just laughing because I'm like, mm -mm. I, just because I'm divorced and, and single doesn't mean that I'm just going to give up all my free time to do whatever somebody wants me to do in the church. I have to have a balance. And I'm not a yes person. Absolutely. So. <laughs> Absolutely not. Absolutely. <laughs> and I won't be. Because not having that balance will just stress you more. Not having mm -hmm. that balance, it, it's like striving and striving. The same thing, you know, about wanting to mar be married. When you don't have a balance, even in your church work and your ministry life, it still leaves you unfulfilled. There is always going to be a gaping hole in your heart that Christ should fill. And church work doesn't fill that. Mm -hmm. I don't care That's who asks you work. to do it again. It's just, it's I don't care if they do work. ask you to show up again. Yeah. Busy work. Just busy work. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, do as you do unto the Lord. And but God has promised. Can we do it? It's, it? it's because you want me to. It's not doing it as unto the Lord. I'm just trying to appease somebody, you know. You were saying something. I found what I was looking for earlier. Yes, I was just going to say that um, when trying to find her husband or be found by one, occupies the majority of your thoughts behavior when you determine that you'd be happy if you just had a man or if you just had a wife then you're out of proper alignment with god because he promises to be everything that you need you don't need anything else you don't need church work career family obligations or any of that to complete you okay right. so um if we fail to thrive in our gift to singleness because our heart is set on something that we need beside god but as a single woman we can be complete trusting that god makes us whole anytime that we determine that god is not enough that i must have something or someone in addition to him i am not letting the glory of god shine through me and i remain out of alignment with the word hmm. Your singleness is part of your calling for God, your reason for being, and you're part of your divinely ordained purpose. That doesn't mean that you have to be full time in ministry, that you can't take a vacation on the beach by yourself. Doesn't mean right. that you can't do the things that you enjoy, but your calling may be something else that God has uh, called you to do. It could be something completely outside of church. For example, I like to write. I'm a writer. Me too. It's something that God has called me to do, but he took my gift for writing and is using that for his glory right? and is using that to strengthen and encourage someone else. So that's how you find those areas, those things that God has given you. So this, my gift isn't something that I do on Sunday morning at church. Mm -hmm. My gift isn't something that I do in the convocation unless they call me to speak on the subject, but my gift is writing and communicating. And so God has taken that gift and he is using it to his glory. So I find fulfillment in ministry in being able to do what God has called me to do. That's good. So being, um, how long have you been divorced? Since the year of our Lord, 1900. 
in 95. Okay, and I've been divorced since 2006. So how did you rediscover your identity and purpose after your divorce? So being married and divorced and, you know, just living a single life. Did you lose any of your identity? It was... Yeah, I the person that I was toward, I was married for 11 years, almost 12. And the person that I was after 12 years was not the person that I was going into that marriage young. Um, so coming out of that marriage, and it was my choice to come out of that marriage. And to be perfectly honest, side note, I thought the mothers was going to wear me out when I said I was getting divorced. And I was shocked and surprised and pleased to learn the older mothers that I went to and told them immediately supported me. Immediately right. said, um, and I, I, I will um, quote Mother Boyer. Mother Boyer said, Olivia, you don't, God don't require you to be married to so-and-so, but he does require you to be saved. I was shocked. I thought she was going to say the unsanctified husband sanctified by the wife. And none of that, I didn't get any of that. I didn't get you any of that. Right. I got so much support from other women who have been through. Yes. Who have been through bad marriages. You and other blessed. people may not have even right. known that they were in bad marriages. I got yes, and Some of them were widowed. Some of them were divorced. Mm hmm. I did not. I mean, some of that happened, but for the most part, those in whom I had put my confidence and those that mm -hmm. knew me provided me with support that I needed to make it through that time. But coming out of it, I didn't like who I was. Um, my character was very faulty. I had a lot of issues and things and that were going on. And I had to completely rededicate and do my first works over. Mm -hmm. I had to go back before God and say, as I am, God, I'm bringing all this to you and I need you to change me. And I need you to not just give me what I want. Don't give me the desires of my heart, but give me what my heart should desire. And what my heart desires is what you want for me mm -hmm. and who you want in my life and where you want me to be and how you want to take me. And it took some time to process and to unpack some things that I was carrying. And I continue to work to, uh, to process and unpack things that I seem to pick up and things that I see. And, and you know, we got to fight the old man all the time. He got to die daily. We got to right. run over the old man with a bus. I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's some things that we have to do. But, but it truly becomes a matter of trust and it becomes a matter of relationship so that you have intimacy, emotional and spiritual intimacy in your relationship with Christ, in your conversations with him, in your time with him. There is no substitute for your one on one time with Christ. None. You won't make it without that. No, he has no. to build you. He has to strengthen you. And then you have to trust him through that. And he does that on a regular basis. He does yeah. that on a daily basis because he adores you. One of the things that I also uh, talk about in the book is how precious that single saved person is to God. How he enters into a covenant relationship with us that other people don't have. Right. We have something, a name set aside for those in covenant with him that cannot be taken away, a special place in his house, a special place in his kingdom, because we have chosen to honor our commitment to him. Yeah. Because we have chosen to put him first, because we have chosen to say whether I have or whether I don't have, I will trust. If I have to cry my tears wet at night, cry my pillow wet at night, when I get up in the morning, I'm going to trust you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to walk with you. I'm going to believe that you have, as Jeremiah, what is it, uh, 7 and 9 says, that you have a tr an expected end for me. Jeremiah 29 and 11. You've promised some things to do that you would do for me. 29 and 11. I knew I had it wrong. <laughs> yeah. 29 and 11, that you have an expected end for me. Yeah. It's a place that you have for me that nobody else has. And we yeah. can trust that. Yes, we can we trust can. that. We can live on that. 
So what about this scripture, Genesis 2 and 18? Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I just want to say, I wanted to say this. Single women waiting for your Boaz should remember that you are not just a future wife. You are precious in the eyes of God, just as you are, and you are his beloved. Your life does not start the day that you meet your Boaz. It started the day you gave your heart to Christ. And he enters into covenant relationship with you the same way a husband enters into a marriage relationship with you. He enters into a covenant relationship and he will not break it. That's his promise. That is his promise. Uh, the scripture. Come on with I, Genesis. <laughs> in Genesis 2 and 18. It is not good that man should be alone. Um, he will make, a, make him a help me for him. So if Genesis 2 and 18 says it's not good for a man to be alone. Why do you think there's so many people that are single and then again, single, saved and satisfied if it's not good for man or really a woman to be alone? Can you elaborate on that? <laughs> well, I can because you went all the way back to creation <laughs> and it was not good that a man created to live in the garden in true fellowship with God should be alone. There should be other people created as well. There should be a woman created that is perfect, that is meat for him. Created perfect meat for him. And that's his word. And then not long after God said that, sin entered the world. Sin came in and wrecked it. Yeah. So he said it's not good, but he didn't say it wouldn't be. <laughs> so some people will be alone. Yes, they will. Yes, they will. It may not feel good. <laughs> That's why after you leave Genesis, get into the rest of those books, there's a whole lot of other promises. Right. Because he would not leave us comfortless. No, he wouldn't. He said he wouldn't, and he doesn't. He will not leave us comfortless. No. So won't. that once sin entered the world, and it wasn't good for that man to be alone, that there had to be other created beings, Ashley woman. Me, that was made to fit perfectly with him, mm -hmm. but sin entered the world. So, next, the next few verses down, he's like, "Well, God, that woman you gave me—that's what he said." <laughs> <wasn't> he? <laughs> <sighs> In other words, well, God, um, it's really your fault because I was alone, and then you right. gave me her, <laughs> and now she didn't wreck our, our whole thing in the garden. You messed up your plan. <laughs> So it may not be good, but it is. <laughs> <laughs> and then jump over to Proverbs 18. He, he who finds a wife <laughs> finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. But, you know, some aren't looking and for a wife. And obtains favor. <laughs> True. Some aren't looking for a wife. Some like but If he finds her. If he finds right. her, she is a good thing. It's not good that it be alone. So it's good that you can find, if you can find something good, she is a good thing. And you will obtain favor. Mm -hmm. But a lot of them don't find her because they're not looking. They don't want her. No. Some of some them have learned to be fine on their own. Mm -hmm. And some don't want to Some don't her. want like, it. Some don't want to give up the game. But you will find, I, I, but I still believe that if we are centered and focused on God's will. I believe that a man who desires a wife and trusts God for her will find her. But yeah. so many of them have so much other things on their mind and doing it God's way, being focused on what God wants, yeah. wanting to live righteous and holy before God, the way that God would have a man to do is not always his desire. So he can't right. find her. Because why would God take these good things and give her to someone that won't value that gift? Exactly. He not, he'll do I think there's Sometimes he's looking out for you. Sometimes he's looking yeah, exactly. out for him. Exactly. Exactly. You know, I believe that um, families and, and marriage, it, it is a blessing. It just, it didn't work for me. Um, <laughs> but that's how I got to Missouri. <laughs> running it didn't work that time. No, it didn't work. <laughs> and I wasn't going to say, 
I just let people talk about me. Y'all don't know what you're talking about, but I'm not going to stay. <laughs> they will mm-hmm. damn you to hell. <laughs> you need to stay mm-hmm. married. I mean, I'm not, I wasn't going to stay will. married when I can pay all my bills. I can work and take care of myself. So I'd rather have peace, <laughs> a peace mm-hmm. of mind, than have someone paying all the bills. And, you know, I'm not worried about that. I'd rather have peace, God and peace. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And I got my peace. God and peace. And and again, as long as that peace is not in disobedience. Yeah. As long as peace isn't isn't, I'm just so I'm so thrilled with where I am now. I'm so satisfied that I don't care what God says. This is what I want to do. This is where I want to be. This is what I'm keeping. So we can have that peace of God as long as we are still hearing the voice of God and willing to be and do what He's saying. Yeah, and it, it took me a while, you know, from the year of our Lord 1995. You know, it took me a while <laughs> to get to the point where I was saying yes to God, yes to His will. Because I remember a young man called me one day and said that the Lord, you know, you you have those. You've been on my mind. The Lord brought you before me three times, and I believe you're my wife. Sorry, son, he ain't said nothing to me. Exactly. <laughs> nothing. It scared me, and I was like, oh God. What if, you know, but the Lord assured me that that was not his plan for me. I'm like, you need to stop we have to be listening at all times for his plan and willing to do it. So what about uh, <laughs> women that build up walls and right. around themselves? You know, some build up walls mm-hmm. where if someone wanted to talk to them, you won't even let them. Any advice for them? Right. Any advice for those brothers right. or sisters? Again, that comes back to trusting. So you you have to, if you're putting up walls and you're putting up barriers, it's, it's again, it's self-protection. So you have to be able to trust that the God that holds your heart in his hand would not let anyone trifle with it. That you, that he will create a situation where you can safely give that heart. You can safely give that love. And you have to follow him for that. Seek him for that and trust him for that. I mean, do we really trust him? Lord, I believe you saved me and I'm sanctified. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. But yeah, I still got this. I got this one in my own hands because I'm not really trusting anybody that, you know, that I don't care if it, nothing that nobody stepped up to me and what they're trying to say. Then we're trying to steer it all ourselves. We still have to trust him. You have to be able to surrender all of it to him. You don't get to hold pieces back. So would you want to be single, saved, and satisfied and a brother approaches you and you think, well, he might, he might be the one, you know, you might kind of like him a little bit, but his credit scores are 300 and he really doesn't have a good work history and he doesn't have any money in the bank uh, or nothing to offer you, nothing to bring to the table. Um, would you be, <laughs> let me stop. Would you be willing to accept him? <laughs> you're frozen so <laughs> my first impulse is to tell him keep stepping but here's the thing <laughs> here's the thing you have again you have to know that you are a treasure of great value to God that he won't give you to anyone that he does not de- that he does not deem worthy right, so sometimes you right. can't see it all at first you might not, right. all you might be able to see is that credit score. <laughs> right. And you get stuck right there. Or maybe all you can see is he got three baby mamas and all of his income is going to child support. I ain't doing right. it. I mean, those right. might be the things that you can see. But the question is, you must be willing to take the time to get to know him. Yes. And willing, you know, being vulnerable is very difficult. Yeah. Especially for women who are independent, women who are strong, women who have got their lives together. Exactly. To let ourselves be vulnerable is difficult. Oh, well, you know it. That's why it's mm-hmm. all about trusting God and accepting wise expecting accepting wise counsel from those who know. Right. Find out everything you can about them, brother. Who's your pastor? How you get right. along with your mama? Are you a mama? Do you boy? do you go to church on Sunday or do you go on holiday? Are you a mama's boy? I'm just saying. 
Okay. You know, ask a fine there. There's nothing wrong with protecting yourself. Absolutely. Protect your heart. Some women fall in love so quickly. Mm-hmm. There's nothing wrong with protecting your heart, no, but trusting not. God while you do it. That's right. And being willing to be open. If he says this is it, then be willing to, you got to be willing. Be like, what you say, Lord? I don't think I heard you. Can I fleece you like Gideon? What did you say? <laughs> Lord, you talking to me? <laughs> right. Lord, what? Who? Me? What? <laughs> what you and say, ask, Lord? I say asking all the questions. <laughs> right. Who, me? <laughs> 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 Oh, this, this has been very fruitful. Let's see. Do and I you'll know. Anyway, I mean, there are I, things that you know. Yeah. Sister Laverne and Sister Bonnie, y'all will know. <laughs> it, it's still online. <laughs> They'll know. But um, yeah, it's um, it's something. It's more than an ocean. And then just from being married mm-hmm. and being single, like you were saying in the beginning, some women or some men enjoy their freedom. Even some widows or widowers after they, mm-hmm. as you were saying, they might not want to get married again. Then people are looking at you like you're crazy. Why don't you want to get married? And you don't want to get married, mm-hmm. you know, and they're trying to mix, mm-hmm. mix you, match you with someone or just because you're single and you take pictures with somebody and you're friendly, then everybody thinks you want that person. It's like, come on out of your carnality. Just because you're friendly and you like to socialize. And people have to understand that not wanting to be married and not wanting companionship and not wanting friendship aren't the same thing. Mm -hmm. So you you can be unmarried, but you still want companionship. You still need closeness. You still need intimacy and relationships. You still need people you can depend on. You still need someone to be close to. And when I was saying right. all the things about trusting God and, and he is, all, you know, he can complete us and he is all we need. We need, we need friends and we need companions and we need someone that we can talk to. We need the girls that we can be real with and the brother that will have your back. We still need those things. And I, I think it's important our, in our churches. We don't teach enough about developing that. No. Everybody's so scared when a single woman has a conversation with a man that she's after him I and that know. she wants him. Exactly. Well, it's annoying. You, most of the time, you don't, a lot of times you don't even like him. Exactly. Sometimes it's your husband and you don't even like him, but you don't want exactly. him. Exactly. Right. Well, I don't right. like him that much either. Just so, <laughs> right. Right. So I, I believe that that's part of what part of what we have to teach is that those relationships need to be normalized and yeah. need to be supported. Right. And we fail to do that in most occasions in most churches right. for men and, and then, women. Somebody needs to come alongside these men and help support these brothers. Right. Right. And when someone does get a divorce, you shouldn't shun them and exile them. <laughs> They're not the first and they won't be the last. Restore people in love. You never know what a person right. went through. <laughs> but people are so quick to be judgmental. Mm-hmm. And um, or that what did you do wrong? What do you mean? What did I do wrong? Right. It doesn't mean you did anything wrong. The other person could have did whatever they did, or you know, just just like mm-mm. people don't get it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but they're so quick to talk. That's why we should pray more That's and true. talk less, especially when you don't know the situation. And first and foremost, people just need to mind their business. <laughs> If they need to mind theirs, you know, like, I don't know if you remember that old song. I got so much to talk about that. I don't have time to talk about you. I can just tell you how good God has been to me, mm-hmm. but I see it's seven Oh seven. So I don't want to take up your time. I know we started a little yes. late because we had that technical difficulty, but I, can you tell people how to purchase your book? If someone wants to purchase your book, how um, they- you can actually get it on amazon.com. Yeah. It's on Amazon. Um, I prefer that they use Cash App and let me send them the book because Amazon Amazon takes fifty percent of your proceeds. <laughs> so my um, my Cash App is Livy K. It's dollar sign Livy K. Um, and if you purchase it that way, then I will sign and send you the copies. But you can also order them online, and and you can also order it in ebook um, from Amazon. 
Well, thank you. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule today just to share with us um, from your book and your own insight, your personal knowledge and what God has given you to share. Um, Hope this bless someone for Valentine's Day or someone that's thinking about, you know, what was me being single? I hope you just are excited about what God's going to do in your life and just be prepared. And for those of you that are waiting for a husband, just keep waiting in, in, in good faith. Just be found busy. He might find you working. Remember, uh, Ruth? <laughs> just be found working. That's right. Work while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. And you never know when he's watching you. Because Sister Bonnie says she was an usher for 30 you never know. years in her previous church. She said, at my present church, I have been asked to usher, and I'm not sure that I want to. You have to make yourself happy. Well, you might just usher your husband in on one Sunday. <laughs> you never know. But uh, <laughs> it'd be like, oh, let me take you to your seat. You just might. I like the way she walked me down the house. <laughs> Eyes open. Be vigilant. You don't know what God might do. He might surprise like, you. Like, what's your name? Sister Bonnie, what? Can I have your number? Can I take you to lunch? <laughs> you might want to usher. <laughs> Put in a good perfume and Sister Laverne <laughs> at that AIM convention. Mm -hmm. Just keep Be on looking. Being also ready. Mm hmm <laughs> <laughs> Put your time in paydays coming after a while. <laughs> oh, but thank you. <laughs> Y'all know I like to laugh, so I'm a little corny, but it's all good. That's why it's love, laugh, and live a godly life. <laughs> all right, sis. Yes. Thank you again. And um, we'll get together and see you real soon. May the Thank Lord you so watch. much for having me. It has been a pleasure. I've enjoyed our conversation very much. Let's see. Uh, she said, all right now. <laughs> yeah, all right now. <laughs> Amen, Memphis. Mm -hmm. Just keep wearing them pretty hats and looking good. <laughs> Working for the Lord. <laughs> Serving the Lord will pay off after a while. <laughs> all right. Good night, everybody. Serving with badness. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> no, just make sure you're smiling. Don't be no frowning nag. Or me no hen. Just like <laughs> you're frozen. All right, but for real, you all have a wonderful evening, and this should uh, stay on.